introduces us to a very useful new kind of fish, the babble fish. Shove this fish inside your ear, and you can instantly understand any spoken language. Now, that's a smart fish. Unfortunately, this doesn't work so well in real life. And it would get kind of slimy. But fish still have a lot to offer us when it comes to hearing. That's what I study, fish hearing. So yes, first of all, fish hear. But I'm interested in not only how do fish hear, but how can we learn from fish hearing and apply that to us? It all comes down to hair cells. Not these kind of hairs, and not the hairs that some of us grow out of our ears, but cells deep inside our ears, in our inner ears, that allow us to hear. When these cells hear a sound, they send a signal to the brain, saying they heard something. They're called hair cells because they have little hair-like things that stick out the top. And when those hairs hear something, they do a little dance. Hopefully all of your hairs are doing this right now if you're listening to me. So we're going to try this. OK, everybody ready to be a hair cell? Stick your little hairs out the top. And when you hear something, kind of move, move around. All right, now the sound gets louder. And you get move more frenzy, more frenzy. OK, done. Because when the sound gets too loud, those cells can explode or they can shrivel up, and they die. This is the basis of deafness, hair cells that don't work right anymore, or that are no longer there. When you walk out of a nightclub with your ears ringing, that's your hair cells crying for help. <laughs> we don't have very many of these cells. So we have billions and billions of cells in our brains that let us think, and only 14,000 of cells in our ears that allow us to hear. That's like if you took the whole population of the United States, and all of us could think, but the hearing was done by only 44 people for the whole country. That's not very, very many hair cells. We start with 14,000. And when they're gone, they're gone. This is where fish come in. As I said, fish have ears, and they have hair cells. So first, that means that that bowl with the goldfish in it on your piano, it hears all those wrong notes. <laughs> but what's really cool about fish is they can regenerate their hair cells. When the fish leaves the all-night rave, its hair cells are suffering. But a few days later, it grows new ones. How? That's why we study fish. We want to harness their fishy tricks so that we can grow new hair cells in us. It probably doesn't involve shoving the fish in our ear, but hopefully shoving the ideas from the fish into our ears. Because when it comes to hearing regeneration, fish are way ahead of us. Those are smart fish. So I'm a snorkeler, <laughs> and when I'm in the water, I hear you know all the fishy sounds and things going on. But I also hear motorboats and big boats and and a lot. Is is do you have any evidence that that sort of sound level is affecting the fish? You've hit one of the key issues really in fish hearing. I know it sounds like a small field over the last few years. <laughs> And not just for fish, but for marine life in general. So as you pointed out, the oceans are getting louder. Shipping traffic is increasing. We're turning to the oceans for energy use. And that means things are getting more noisy. We so far haven't seen that the sound levels are intense enough that they cause the fish's hair cells to go crazy. And as I said, they can regenerate them. But the sound is intense enough that it's causing fish to not stay in their normal areas. So maybe they're avoiding the places where they normally go to mate. It's causing problems with whales in terms of they're changing their migratory patterns to avoid noise. So yes, underwater is noisy enough with all of that shipping traffic to really cause a problem. So before we started making you know, lots of noise in the ocean, what was the evolutionary reason for fish to hear? If you think about fish living in a broad ocean, what, were they, what was the hearing used for? I'm laughing because this is something that's been argued about in our very small, tight-knit community for Well, you have 20 decades. seconds, so okay. solve it. <laughs> OK. 
If you stick your head underwater, forget all the ship noise, you still hear waves, you hear rain, you can hear the fin of the predator coming up behind you. So really, hearing evolved to take in the acoustic scene, all the noise around the fish, so that they could learn something about their environment. Some fish do use sound to communicate, so some male fish sing to attract the ladies. But we think that it was hearing what was going on around them, coming up behind them, that came first. First, I just want to say I really uh, enjoyed your use of humor, and I really appreciate the uh, old Carl Sagan reference when you mentioned billions and billions of, of cells. Um, <laughs> but, um, and, and I'm, I'm really glad you're doing this work because I um, played in a lot of loud bands when I was in my, <laughs> in my misspent youth, and, and what was that? Um, right. So, and, and so the, the prospect of, of you uh, coming up with, with something that, that, that could help with this is, is wonderful, and I'm, I'm, I'm just curious, what do you picture um, coming out of this? Would it be some sort of genetic therapy or some kind of drug, or do you just not know yet because you haven't figured out why, how the fish are doing this, or do you have some sense of what this might lead to as far as a medical innovation that would actually help um, people like me? <laughs> First thing, public service message for those that haven't killed their hair cells yet, wear earplugs because we can't regenerate our hearing tomorrow, so protect the hair cells you still have. For those that have already killed a bunch, I think there are a few different ways this could go. Stem cell therapy has been tried, but it seems like if you stick stem cells into the ears, they start to look like hair cells, but they don't really know what they're supposed to do. The nerves doesn't connect right from the hair cell to the brain. It seems like, at this point, a drug that causes the surrounding cells to divide and turn into new hair cells is probably the best option. Because that's what happens in the fish ear. The cells around the hair cells, something tells them divide, grow little hairs at the top, and become new hair cells. And we're looking to figure out what that is and how can we use a drug to do the same thing in our ears. 